I kind of like that the very ending is basically the same as the very beginning. I mean, when you're first playing, you know, the opening, and he jumps and teleports, you think that he teleports to the start of the game, you know, to where he's coming out of, you know, using the sword as a machete, coming out of the woods, forest, whatever, and reaching Izdahar, but then at the end you realize, oh, that was Izdahar, and apparently he teleported to some astral plane, or it's in his mind, something. The ending was okay, it was a little bit strange, I'm not entirely sure what the whole point was. I guess they defeated the plant, the, the, the Hauma, Mauha, Aloha, whatever. I mean, Zahra granted the immortal spirit of herself to the princess of Izdahar, making sure that there was still a royal line of Izdahar. And then the princess falls into the plant, I guess the plants die. I suppose that the idea is that because she gave away her immortality, Zahra is now dying, and she's trying desperately to make sure that he will remember her, and I guess return for the princess, and I don't know marry the princess, and then Zahra is sort of inside the princess. It's kind of hot. I don't know, but that was the ending. <laughs> the... Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna spoil the Two Thrones ending now. So don't watch if you don't want that on your conscience. It was kind of similar with this, you know, with the, you know, you have to jump up some stuff to get to where you're killing the final boss, and yeah, it was really, really obvious that the princess was really the witch. I will admit that I didn't know that the beast was actually the sultan, but I did know that he wasn't a bad guy, you know, that there was just something else to it there. But anyway, in the Two Thrones, it's far, far better. The jumping, you know, all the acrobatic stuff there, the... Just, and, and, you know, one mistake, or hesitate for just a little bit, or get shot at the wrong time by the guy, the vizier, and you'll fall and have to, you know, rewind time or start over. That was a freaking boss fight. This was really easy, and the going from place to place to stab at it was not that good. The sword looked hideous in his sheath. Maybe that was the last, excuse me, minute decision. Maybe they didn't think that through, I don't know, but it looked really bad. And the, the thing of that the prince then goes through this something in his mind kind of thing, and again it was just kind of better, and it was really surreal in the Two Thrones. Here it, it was okay, I guess. I really hated the final fight against the Beast because, at least for me, he kept doing something where I couldn't approach him. He kept, you know, basically, as far as I could tell, you could only approach him when he did the thing where he ends up jumping and landing and then he spreads some, I don't know, plant essence or something. And as long as you're not you know, getting hit by that when he lands, you can strike him a couple of times. And then run off and wait for him to do it again. I had to play against him three or four times before he even did that more than a couple of times, you know. I don't have a problem with playing against the boss several times, but when he isn't doing what he's supposed to be doing to enable you to defeat him, yeah.
I also just didn't really care much for how much of the boss fighting in this game was you just have to dodge and then you know eventually they'll do something to give you an opening and yeah, that's kind of it I don't know it just the worst boss fights of all of the Prince of Persia games thus far again once again you know not including the 2008 edition because I haven't played it all yet That might be more or less it. I don't have a problem with this being different from the other console versions. But it does make me wonder why they stuck with the title of the Forgotten Sands, because this has nothing to do with Sands, other than the fact that he's walking on it, you know. There, there are no sands of time here, you know, as far as I understand, there was some sands of time stuff going on in the other console versions of this game, so I don't know why they didn't just retitle it or something, since it wasn't even the same game, anyway, but that might be more or less... Okay, I just gotta say, I love the outer space, the moon thing, you know, where you could see some constellations. I mean, the overall background is meh, but maybe that's, you know, the Wii. But the whole thing, you know, I'm just traveling through all these places and so little ground underneath your feet, so little, and, and everything constantly shifting and moving, that was really cool. That is something that's going to stay in my mind for a while. This really did manage to inspire a sense of awe, you know, have that kind of sense of magic and something inexplicable. Yeah, that might be everything I had to say, so those are my thoughts on Prince of Persia, the Forgotten Sands for the Wii. I hope you enjoy them. See you next time.